great Australian chaser, Chris, with 12 stone on his back. His hat's off and a tremendous reception. You've never heard one like it at Liverpool. The winning Rod Stashel Hunt rider of all time has waited a long time to land his first Grand National. The real national horse that everyone remembers you for, and I think even though it didn't win, in some ways the best horse Fred ever run in the national would be Crisp. Now, briefly, I remember the race really well because it's the first national I ever saw alive. It's a, it's a, I used to work in those days, the only proper job I've ever had in my life. I worked for a bank and I hated every second of it. And after about two months there, I was just going to leave and I got wind of the fact that they were having an outing to the National. I thought, I'll hold on to that, to a free trip to the National. And what a National to start with. Yeah. I mean, you take over the story, because there has never, ever been a horse who's jumped entry as well in my lifetime. Well, we touched earlier on tactics. Now, a two-mile champion chaser and a record holder, probably still to this day at various meetings, over two and two and a half, with 12 stone, you would, anyone with a brain, say, in order to get four and a half miles, like riding a bicycle in behind a bus, switch him off and get carried along by the field. Fred Winter rightly said, he is so brave, you will jump on one of the other runners and you'll end up on the ground and you cannot win. You see, in at Aintree, there are a lot of horses who are not very sure of themselves, mm -hmm. and they go in and instead of coming up and jumping, they go, ooh, uh, ooh, 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 we're over. So they're they're losing momentum and I'd been running up. So the theory was, let, not saying I was anything like Lester Piggott, but Lester Piggott did it on the flat. He would slow a race down from the front mm -hmm. and, and jockeys behind would think, well, he knows what he's doing, you know, he knows his pace and they'd slow with him. And Fred said, do a Lester Piggott. <laughs> <laughs> well, me? <laughs> anyway, so that was the theory. We go in front on the inside, all Fred's runners, go down the inside, mm -hmm. where the drops were bigger, the turns were sharper, but you could save ground. Mm -hmm. So that's where my men go. So that's what we did. Um, so that was the answer, was to make the running and slow the race down. That was the theory. In practice, Crisp, as I've told you how he jumped, that line of fences after the start going down to beaches, what a sight that is, Steve. Yeah. And he saw them, he went, yay, you know, let's go, boys. And he was never running away with it. People think I got run away with it. Never running away. He was just so quick when he saw a fence going in, across, and away. So he could be making a length, two lengths at a jump. 30 jumps? How far is, you know... You get great pictures out on particularly the second circuit, where the first circuit, there's other horses yes. around. Once you're clearly in the lead, the, 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 the jump after jump after jump, it's foot perfect. Yeah. And it's not just efficient. You see lots of horses who've won a national. Red Rum was a good example. Yep. It was a really efficient jumper, never yes. going to fall, yes. really clever jumper. He was spectacular, Chris, and there's a fantastic site, Beechers, where he actually clears the drop. And uh, how crazy is that? The drop isn't there anymore, of course. No. But what you pointed out to me earlier is, on the inside of the landing, there was an indentation, a yeah. big indentation. Yeah, absolutely. And he cleared the fence, the landing, and the indentation. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. was most amazing. It, it really was. And he was, you know, whatever, you know, in the end, he got caught. And, you know, well, obviously, you'll, 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 you'll tell us about that again. But just the, the basic form of the race, he's given £23 to... The greatest yes. national horse yes. we've seen. Yes. And miles back in third is Lescargo, who already won two gold cups and went on to win a Grand National. Yeah. Spanish steps in for it's fantastic. It must oh. have been the thrill of a lifetime. I'll go forward before I go back. He had given me elation, the thought of elation, mm. and within a few strides, it's absolutely depression. But within a minute, I'm back on my A game. Mm. I have had a ride that money could not buy. Richest man in the world could not have ridden that horse. Mm. I had earned the right to ride him. But what was quite funny on the way round, jumping so spectacularly that it was such, mm. oh, I, you know, it was great. But when I went to beaches, or before that, going out to the second circuit, poor old Grey Sombrero had fallen at the chair, which left me well clear. He'd been upsides me all the way around, but he was on the wide outside, was. I was inside. But, you know, 
I ostensibly made all the running. When uh, we went to go on the second circuit, it's quite eerie. I couldn't hear another horse. Normally, there's a lot of noise, talking, etc. Couldn't hear another horse. Turned down onto the second circuit. There were holes in the fences from carnage in the first. I passed a jockey leaning on the rails, holding a bridle. No <laughs> horse anywhere, just holding his bridle. And when we went to Beaches for the second time, I could hear, in those days, they had a public address all the way around, and Michael O'Hare did it. And I could hear him going down to Beaches. You're alert, even though we can't count, we're alerted to the fact there's a big hedge going, so you think Beaches Brook. And I could hear Michael O'Hare saying, and Dick Pittman on Christmas, 25 lengths clear of red rum coming out of the pack. Fletcher's kicking red rum. And I thought, that'll do me, you know, <laughs> fine, just keep hold of his head. As we went from there to the Foynaven, the next one, David Nicholson was sitting on Barsnet, I think he wrote something like that, like an Indian watching a war. <laughs> his horse was picking grass, he'd got his arms folded. You know, the Duke was a bit pompous and he said in a clear voice Richard you're actually 33 and a half lengths clear I mean how the hell would you know that you know he said kick on and you'll win and I thought no kick on is what I will not do doubtful stamina keep hold and we were brilliant at the canal turn brilliant which as you know you jump it you go right-handed so if you can you move out and you jump yeah. across and both times, because I had the space, he was superb. But for a big horse, he was superb. Yeah, wasn't yeah. He? yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, but that's a very long way. As you get over the canal and going towards Valentine's, you look, the stands are a mile away, mm. or three quarters, mm. I don't know. You know, they're small, so don't get excited. So I kept holding a bit, holding a bit, holding a bit. Cross the Anchor Bridge Road, coming on to the race course proper. And he started to go from pulling and his legs, good mover, legs going out in front of him, to legs going sideways. You know, he was emptying. He had floppy, lopped ears, they were halfway up. Even his ears lost their strength and went Pfft. Now that is bottom of the barrel, isn't it? You can't get much worse than losing the strength in your ears. And although it may not have appeared so to the general public, Fred Winter, as I came round on to jump the last two, said to the owner, we'll be beaten, because it's a long way. Mm. Anyway, I could hear red rum coming. It was like the table, the ground, fast ground. And you could hear drum, 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 drum. Also, he was a high blower, which only a few horses are. As he exhaled, his nostrils flapped. Because so, drum, drum, getting louder, Steve. Oh, my <laughs> God, you know, please help me out here. And we jumped the last, you have 494 yards. <laughs> You've got to go around the elbow. And I thought, I've got to wake him up. So I put my stick through and whacked him, trying to wake him up. Fred would never let us hurt horses, so he said, give them two. That's... And the error there was that I picked up my right hand when I needed to go right-handed to get round the elbow. Mm -hmm. If I'd had, and this is why I'm a proponent for no sticks, mm -hmm. if I'd had no whip and just kept hold of his head, big horse, hold of his head, balanced, got to the elbow and with a good lead, he would, he would have won. You think I, so? You I, think I, it made the difference? I yeah? absolutely will die knowing I gave away because I took my hand off the range you see to give him a smack I've let go of his head a bit and he's fallen away to the left. Mm. He's gone off a true path. I've then had to pull him back onto it and get his momentum going. I'm beaten half a length, three quarters of a length maybe, I don't know. Last two strides. I will die knowing that I made a schoolboy error and I was in jockey terms a man and it was unforgivable. And there we go. I've got to live with that. And Chris just wandering a little off a two line now. He's beginning to lose concentration. He's been out there on his own for so long. And Red Rum is making ground on him still as they come to the line. It's a furlong to run now. 
200 yards now for Crispin. Red Rum still closing on him, and Crisp is getting very tired. And Red Rum is pounding after him. Red Rum is the one that's finishing the strongest. He's going to get up. Red Rum is going to win the national. And at the line, Red Rum has just snatched it from Crispin. Red Rum is the winner, and Crisp is second. Lescargo's just coming up now to be third. It's a shame the horse never got the chance only a year later because again I, my memory didn't uh, remember the national video didn't remember the following season so well but in his last run i think i'm right in saying he beat red rum off level weights at doncaster by a, a very easy yeah you know, of level weights he was a better horse wasn't yep. he? um and then got injured is that right yep in that race yeah um we met it wasn't meant to be a match but we frightened everyone away mm. and we had 12 stones each red rum and crisp I won 10 lengths on the bridle, and when he came in, there was a bit of heat in the front tendon, flexor tendon, and Fred Winter was such a sentimentalist as a person. He said to me, Richard, I'm gonna retire this horse. I will never subject him to breaking down mm. properly. Mm. You know, well, what a brave move when you've just got a horse who you're dying to go back to Aintree, mm. and the owner was, was in agreement, and they gave him to me, now, because I'm a hunting, riding man, they gave him to me, and uh, the country around here, small fields, clay, you know, trappy little jumps. And before they cooled his legs off and got him into a position for him to come to me, they gave him to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> because, and they were right, the, the country around here wasn't good enough for him. So he went up to the Zetland up in North Yorkshire, mm -hmm. near Scotch Corner, to a, a man called John Trotter. He hunted for eight seasons, carrying a big man, legs were perfect. And I wrote his obituary for the horse and hound when he died, and they buried him at the entrance to the estate, big gates, big drive, they buried him there, and they put a flowering cherry tree on top of him. Well, you know they tree every year, the flowering pink cherries yeah, yeah, come yeah. out, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my last line was, and forevermore, pink petals of tears will rain down on Chris. Oh. I burst out crying. It's in my loo now, you know, the excerpt of it. I, every time I go in there, you know, I have a tear. I won't ask you to say the, the best of you, because I would think those sort of things are unfair. Would it be fair to say that was the, the most enjoyable ride you've ever had? Without a doubt. Because of its enormity worldwide, it is huge. I mean, the Parley Beach is a great race in Czechoslovakia, um, but they are privet fences, you can walk through some of them, you know. Aintree then was very tough. What is sad, it's tightened up and it's changed. Mm -hmm. Horses now don't nod on Beecher's Brook, the, mm -hmm. the, the drop has gone and the hole has gone and all sort of thing. But we used to have some great characters riding in it. The Duke of Albuquerque. Mm, remember, you know, yeah, the yeah. man had a private army of beef eaters. <laughs> there he was riding five <laughs> times in the National. And the best ride was when he you couldn't do it now. He broke both collarbones and he was encased in plaster of Paris so he could only do that, you know, it was the most stylish he ever got. Finished fifth. Tim Durant, an American, 68 years of age, fell three times and remounted three times and finished. <laughs> and one year I, I lined up between two Americans, the Sloan brothers, George and Paul. Paul had got the inner where I wanted to go. I'm one off the inner and the other brother there. And I looked at them. Paul had got his horse's reins by the ears as if it was a sprint. George looks like he's having a cigarette, you know, the end. and I thought, you're in a bad position here, Pippen, get out. So I moved out of the way. Now we've had some great characters. And when you think the best woman until Katie Walsh was Rosemary Henderson. Oh gosh, yes. yes 52, yeah, yeah. a hunting girl, not a racing girl, yeah. finished fifth, yeah. you know. And a girl will win the national before she wins the Gold Cup. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Absolutely. And well, Richard, on that note, thank you very much. Thank you.